Hey, good morning to you, friend. Welcome back to the Morning Minute Meditation. I am sitting in beautiful Jefferson, North Carolina, enjoying a good cup of Old House coffee here at Third Day Market. I, I love coming by this place when I'm in the area. Good food, good coffee, and a good atmosphere. And I just wanted to come by today and drop off a, a Morning Minute Meditation for you. The Apostle Paul, when dealing with Timothy, said this of Timothy. He said that we are to be an example of the believers. We're not to let anyone despise our youth, but to be an example of the believers in word, conversation, charity, spirit, faith, and purity. In other words, our life is to be a, an example. Then there is uh, this statement made by Paul to Titus, who was also a son to Paul in the faith, he said, In all things you show thyself a pattern of good works. The modern-day word that is used by a lot of the uh, hipster people of the day is influencer. In other words, we need to be an influencer. Our lives needs uh, need hold influence. In the community we live in, it need hold influence on the job and influence with people that we come in contact with. Are you living an influential life? And the second question is, when you are dead and gone, will your life continue to have influence after you're gone? One of the greatest regrets I think that I would have is to live a life, to have enjoyed the pleasures of life, but when I am dead and gone within a generation, my family has forgotten me, and then, of course, everyone else will have as well. I want to leave a legacy that will continue to glow and grow uh, as time and eternity come along. Uh, the, the Lord Jesus Christ uh, made mention of this in Matthew chapter number 5 in the Sermon on the Mount. He said that you're the salt of the earth, and he said if the salt have lost its savor, he said then it is good for nothing but to be cast out and be trodden under foot of men. So I am considered to be salt in society, and therefore the Lord said, as I am salty, my saltiness needs to influence the community that I live in. Another illustration that he gave was uh, a candle. He said that I, just as he was, I am now the light of the world, and a city that is set on a hill cannot be hid, and men don't light a candle and put it under a bushel, uh, but they put it on a candlestick that everyone that's in the house can have light. So I need to be a salty influence, and I need to be a shining influence for the glory of God. And then there needs to be a showing influence by which my life is an example, and then to have that influence to shine on and show on even after I'm dead and gone. It was the communist Chinese government that contracted a writer, an author, uh, to write a discriminatory book against uh, against uh, uh, Hudson Taylor. Hudson Taylor, that great missionary in the Orient, uh, he, they wanted to make sure that the Chinese people that would come along afterward uh, would look at the life of Hudson Taylor as a villain and not a victor, uh, as an enemy and not an Im ambassador of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so as, as the biographer of Hudson Taylor began to research his life and began to write it down, the influence, uh, the Christian influence of Hudson Taylor was so great that the author laid his pen down, bowed on bended knee, and received the Lord Jesus Christ as his personal Savior, knowing that it would be to the peril of his very own life that he did so. But Hudson Taylor's life had an influence upon him. Hudson Taylor had been an influence when he lived, and he is still being an influence even after his death. Hey, let me ask you a question. Whom are you influencing, and is your influence godly or godless, and will it have lasting effects when you're dead and gone? Consider what I say today, my friend. Have yourself a great cup of coffee and a good, good day.